Today we're gonna look at how to get this guy done as fast as possible. All right, first things first, I did lie a little bit because there was an airbrush involved. The simple fact is, an airbrush will not make you a great painter, but it will make you a very fast painter. Base coat with bl black, it would probably look even better with gloss black, I just didn't have any. Then sprayed from above pss, 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 with a little magnesium. Finally, with some brighter pale burnt metal, although I also tried it out with aluminum. Truth be told, these look different. They're pretty similar on the uh, on the miniature, so they both work. You, the Vallejo metal color has a really attractive sheen. It's extremely smooth. You can't see the paint flecks. Um, I like other brands of metallics, but this is just hard to argue with. You get a really vibrant looking and extremely smooth coat of paint with Vallejo metal so color. Back of the napkin math. 30 minutes to prime and base coat with metal color. 12 models makes that right now we're at two and a half minutes per model to get up to the metal finish. All right, so let's see what we can do with this guy. First things first, let's get some gold on him. All right, so here's a little tip. Uh, the, the more, um, the fancier, the more additives that you have in a paint, the more that it flows up into your bristles. So with Citadel contrast paints or inks or washes, they're filled to the brim with flow improvers. And so I'm using a cheap no-name brush if you use your very nice brushes, like, I don't know, even your not so nice brushes, like your army painter brushes or whatever, you gotta be careful because the all the stuff in here will get into the ferrule and if you know anything about brush care, that's bad for it. So as you can see, this isn't even a particularly good brush. It's, it's really not good at all, but I don't care if it gets ruined because I got it in a pack of like 20 from AliExpress or really cheap. And I'm going to just use it to go over some of the parts here that I want to be gold. I'm using Naz Dreg Yellow. Uh, later on, I'll try it with a yellow ink from Vallejo and see if I like that more or less. I like Naz Dreg Yellow over like Iandan Yellow because it's a nice, rich, gold-ish color as opposed to a, a true yellow color. Um, maybe that true yellow carbon might be good on like the, the Iron Jaws Orcs armor, for example, or, or maybe some of the, the brighter yellow from, uh, I think, House Baratheon, right? Or the yellow stag? but. No, for this, I'm going for a rich gold color, specifically the gold. So I don't want to have too much, um, too much brightness, right? Like Lannister. When you, here's the thing about gold. Gold isn't yellow. Gold is has more tones of red and orange. There's a reason that Games Workshop tells you to like wash with Seraphim Sepia uh, or or Flush Tone when they're telling you how to paint Liberators, right? Uh, if they wanted it to be yellow, they would have used a different color, but no, it's, it's, it's a nice, richer, redder color. Okay, does it look amazing? No, but I think it looks like gold, so that's pretty good. Vallejo, heavy red, really simple. Um, you could use all sorts of different reds here. You just have to be willing to, uh, do extra layers and coats. Now, Vallejo sends these, has these very nice paints called extra opaque paints. Now, um, I actually don't know what the difference is, are the pigments thicker or whatever, but you know, they're, they're what they sound like, they're extra opaque. Most acrylic paints are inherently kind of thinned down and transparent, I think that's a feature of them, not most, not all. Um, weirdly, here's a fun fact, the more satin a paint is, the more shiny, in general, the more coverage you're gonna get. I don't know the physics, I'm sorry, but that's just a general rule of thumb. If you really want to like paint the rim of your model black, um, which I usually do, but not always, you want to use a satin black. A little shinier is going to just have more coverage on there. A little shinier means maybe one less coat to get it all the way there. You still probably usually are going to want, to want two thin coats. As you can see, uh, I'm going to need two thin coats on this model, but you get the idea. Two thin coats, just as Duncan said when you were first getting into painting, you want to use two thin coats if at all possible, and uh, when you are painting these guys, because you don't want to have to use three, you want maybe two thin coats of a satin paint or, or, or more of a heavy paint. Now, I only bring up, say, satin, for example, because you can buy cheap satin acrylic paints. This one's from Target. I'm not using that. I'm using the Vallejo Heavy Red, but as an example, right, because you don't need to spend a million dollars on fancy paints from GW or Army Painter or Vallejo or Scale 75 if you're just doing the basics here. 
And these are very basic, right? These The miniatures are lovely, but I'm not doing anything really fancy here. I'm just painting in red, and not even very well. I'm not, I'm not stressing out about it. I'm just trying to block in some red, and that's it. No need to get real fancy here. I would be happy to use some ter terrible craft store paint. I would. I wouldn't. Actually, I wouldn't be happy about it because these flow better, but I would do it. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm basically trying to say that like you don't need to spend a billion dollars on paint for very simple jobs like just blocking in some red. I'm using Volley Hill Heavy Red because it has pretty decent coverage. I like the nice dark red color because it means you can highlight up past that. You don't need to stress out. I might not even use a wash with this, to be honest. I'm that, I'm, I'm gonna be that fast. Anyway, I'm gonna let that dry. So while that paint is drying, uh, it doesn't look amazing, but you know, it looks fine. Maybe one more coat for coverage, depending on my mood. So the next thing we're gonna, we're gonna do is the flesh tones. Now, uh, I see that his face is obviously exposed. If you're lucky, um, you're painting a unit that has a lot of these guys. Um, unfortunately, slash fortunately, all of the Game of Thrones slash A Song of Ice and Fire minis seem to have a lot of flesh tones everywhere, which, which is fine, which is fine. Flesh tones can be cool. But I'm going to paint the flesh pretty quickly. So in this case, I'm going to use Vallejo's Heavy Skin Tone here. Now, it's the same thing as the Vallejo Heavy Red. It's an extra opaque color, kind of comparable to the uh, Games Workshop Citadel base paints with lots of coverage. Lots of colors out there that you can use instead. Um, I have had pretty poor luck with the Reaper Master Series paints, truth be told, but that is just me. That is not an indictment of Reaper. I like a lot of their products and a lot of their models and a lot of their paints, but for some reason, all their paints that are like supposedly supposed to go onto the bones really well, or, or get get you get you done in one coat, I can just never get them to work right. I don't like them. I don't like using them. Um, I really don't know what it is. If I'm if I'm, uh, what's the word? If I'm being improper with them, if I'm watering them down too much. Like I've heard that there are certain Reaper paints that you shouldn't water down. I know. Uh, correct me in the comments because I would like to hear. So this guy still looks pretty terrible, but he does have some base coats on him. And if you had to do like a thousand of these guys, you might want to call them there. That, that's insane to me, but we, you can. Now, some of these guys, I, I've been thinking, I kind of, I like the look visually of them having black gloves, right? Like, I, I, I know that if I was, a, you know, if I was a Lannister, I would spend the money for the gloves. I'd be well paid enough to buy the extra gloves. But at the same time, they kind of look more like knuckles here, right? It kind of looks like too thin for gloves unless they're really some fancy some fancy leather. So, I don't know. You know, uh, although it might contrast better, I think, for this one at least, it will bring me more joy if I paint those gloves black. So, we're going to move on from the flesh tones to the gloves now. And also some of the boots and whatnot. So, this is why I'm, why I'm entering the satin paint a bunch, and I sort of harped on that point. Uh, you can use quote unquote real miniature branded paints. Um, I love the Vallejo Gloss Black. It says just black, but trust me, the Vallejo game color is pretty gloss. Um, I frequently use the Army Painter Matte Black, which is a little more matte, still set and finish. Perfectly functional. In fact, uh, if I'm doing mixing or anything, or if I'm trying to make a glaze or really anything fancy, I'm gonna use those for sure. I think that they're much nicer. I don't know why, but they do. However, this is a bulk job, right? I've got a lot of these guys to paint. Um, I've got, you know, the core box comes with two squads, which is pretty, which is a lot of men, a lot of tiny men. Gizmo, don't get up there. He's yelling at my cat, sorry. Gizmo, don't do it, man. This is not a place for kittens right now. Anyway, uh, so, Giz, what are you doing? Get out of here. Hey, sorry, sorry. Um, well, yeah, well, clearly, I probably shouldn't say 12, 10 minutes. Um, more like 15, let's say 15. Anyway, so I am just doing two thin coats of watered down paint. Sometimes you might not even need two thin coats because if you are good about avoiding overspray, you'll already have the lower areas not super shiny. Uh, and you might only need one thin down coat, and that would save you even more time. I was very zealous with my overspray, so you'll notice that everything from the sword to the base is covered in silver paint, and that's just going to happen sometimes. So, uh, yeah, we got those boots done. Very good, very good to me. Going to do those gloves now, just real thin. Um, 
In general, when you're holding miniatures, I prefer to attach them to like old pill bottles uh, or old paint pots. However, it's a little harder to tape and I am doing so many of these that I kind of want to be able to pick up and put them down much easier. Just, just preference. Um, and uh, one cool tip is you can get a grip and hold it by the top as long as you remember that you're, that you're gonna do the top first and maybe you might need one more coat if you've, you know, if you like strip the primer off or something. My cat is being so naughty right now. He's being very distracting. Uh, okay, cool. So it still looks pretty terrible, but I think that black is done. Time to move on to some black stuff. Army Painter Oak Brown. Basically any dark brown color will do you just fine here. You want superior coverage, and I find the Army Painter's Oak Brown does have that aforementioned satiny finish. So, you know, it's gonna go on there pretty okay. One, maybe two thin down coats. It's already a nice, relatively dark color, so I think it'll be fine. And I'm just going to use this to get in there and do any parts that are, should be visually brown. I feel like those trousers are probably brown. Um, the belt clearly is brown. You could have done this in black as well to save another step. That's actually one thing that you should always keep in mind about speed painting, is a big part of it is limiting your color palette just to save time with how frequently you have to change and wash out the brush. So here we go. Just getting them, being nice and neat and tidy because I don't want to have to even do any fix-ups or, or washes or whatnot. We're going this for maximum speed, functionality, etc. So you could use other browns. Um, I used Craft Store Acrylics on the other one, but you know, do what you want. This will probably take you about, I don't know, taking me about two minutes in total. But uh, yeah, just go over all the browns, one or two thin down coats, real easy. Yeah, they're pretty okay. Now, um, with this harsh light, I don't think I'm gonna wanna use a dark wash, to be honest. I certainly could, but I don't think I'm gonna. But I do feel a certain amount of obligation to do some very basic red highlights, all right? P3 Kador Red Base. You could use any sort of bright red that you like. Fire Engine Red, Cherry Red, Craft Store stuff, whatever you want. A lot of nice colors. You could also use an, any, an orange red which maybe I'll experiment with later. And I'm just going to do some nice broad highlights on the trim here. Real quick, one minute job. Oops, that looks like shit. That's ah, fine, it's fine, it really is fine. Optionally, a little tidbits down there. It's not gonna look very good, but I am going to paint a lot of these and you're gonna see them from a distance. I think that that's the half of the challenge, right? So, uh, let's say 30 seconds on highlights, 30 seconds to a minute on highlights. Um, if you have a small dry brush, it might also look good to, boy, that's not looking great. Um, it might also look good to do a simple dry brush of red all along the red model. Yeah, it doesn't look good, I know, but it'll look fine soon, <laughs> eventually. Or other reddish flesh wash for his face. You can use um, Reichland Flush Shade if you have GW stuff. Soft Tone works fine. Strong Tone works fine from Army Painter. Uh, Vallejo's inks I adore, but they're very strong, so you're, you're not gonna wanna use them straight out of the pot for these. This guy's got a slightly sunnier, darker skin tone, and while well, I could and perhaps should have done another layer of highlighting, I don't care, you're not gonna stop me. You also notice that he does have hair visible. You know what? I'm not gonna see it, are you? I don't think so. So deep down inside, I don't think this model looks very good. Except, I don't know, it doesn't look bad. The sheen from that Vallejo stuff, I'm sorry, from the Vallejo metal color, really is still visible on top. And when you're speed painting, the trick is you want to have higher colors up top, darker colors at the bottom, because the eye will therefore naturally be drawn up top and not worry about the nasty stuff at the bottom. So yeah, I, I think he looks okay. No, there's obviously so much more you could do, but I'm not gonna, and you don't have to if you don't want to. I'm not even gonna show you how. There's lots of great Lannister Guardsman painting tutorials out there. Now what I am gonna do is I'm going to base this up and do a tiny bit of uh, more red, maybe one more coat at the top, it'll be two seconds. Uh, and uh, you also gotta figure out a good basing scheme. Now, 
I always base my models. I always do. 99% of the time, I base my models uh, with sand or bits or texture base. Like That's important to me. The one problem is I actually don't like these bases at all. I don't like them one bit. Uh, most bases will have some sort of visible lip, right? Like this terrible other side model from Weird Games has a simple plastic base and you can see that there's an edge around it. It means that when you paint it up, you can have a nice plastic edge. If you want to, you could also paint it like brown or black, and that way it'll sort of blend in better. It's fine, there's lots of ways to do it. Um, cool Money or Not, in their cruel, cruel choice, uh, has made a, a sort of... It's not a bevel. It's not a bevel is the problem. Like, Games Workshop models have bevels. This does not. So, I got, like... My normal thing would be to put sand up top, and then paint the bevel black or brown, but like, yeah, do you kind of see how there's a technically like the smallest hint of, a, of an edge? Uh, it just does not spark joy. It causes me great anxiety, truth be told. It looks terrible if you have sand or anything around the side of the base because it, it's disruptive, but I don't know. So I'm going to do what I did with this guy. I'm just going to use my cheap, copious, very plentiful craft store acrylic. Normally not very good for anything, but for this... Um, I'm just going to slap on one or two coats, and uh, yeah, that'll be good. Random pro tip. Um, you know how I mentioned about cheap brushes? Well, obviously I have lots of very nice brushes for when I'm painting my fancy Infinity models, or uh, painting a game that I'm really excited about with lots of fine details. You know, there's there's time and place for, for lots of detail on a guy, but I'm not using any of those fancy brushes on this because I'm just painting a base. And in fact, you do not want to use your fancy brushes. Even your quote-unquote standard brush, it's too small. You want to save that, get bad boy, right? Save that nice brush for a moment that you want to use it. Um, even if you take good care of your brushes, using it will always, in some ways, degrade the brush's quality. So that is why I am using the absolute cheapest brush. It's I got it from Amazon uh, in like a pack of 50 or whatever. It's, just, it's not good, but get the job done. So, yeah, about 30 to 40 seconds later, look at that, we've got uh, a base. Now, if you're really OCD like me, you can go over it one more time after it dries, uh, but this looks okay to me. In fact, if I had been using the acrylic, like the, 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 the game color Heavy Paints, for example, or one of the Citadel um, uh, base paints, might not have even needed two coats. We'll see, I'll let it dry first. And by the way, I... Uh, I couldn't resist, and I did a really quick highlight just on his nose and cheeks. Uh, it's perfectly functional, at best. All that in mind, that brings us to about 13 minutes, but we can round up and say 15, but we can also round back down and say that you might be able to get this faster if you are doing this in an assembly line fashion, not changing out your paints every few seconds or rinsing out your brush because you're just going through, let's say, five models at a time. So, let's say about 15 minutes. These, these look about as good as the nicer pre-painted models out there, at the very least, right? They've got a little shading, they've got some color tone, they've got some basic highlights, and they've got all the color that you're expecting from a Lannister Guardsman. I'm gonna call it done here. Now, you're not going to win any awards, but that's not the point. You're going to look way cooler than your opponent because you're going to bring your entirely painted army uh, while they've got a bunch of blue guys, and that's gonna feel really good. So, um, there's things you could do to further enhance the miniature. Uh, a few more red highlights would be good. A very careful dry brush would look great. More basing would be cool. Um, you could add some splatter effect, like blood to the swords or legs. Overall, I think they look pretty good. Um, thanks for watching. And let me know if there's other models that you want to see painted really fast.